In this video, I am going to attempt to survive 400 days in Minecraft Hardcore. Surviving 100 days, 200 days, and even 300 days was extremely difficult, but now, it's time for 400 days. So, let's do it. But, before we do, here is what we did in 300 days. I constructed some automatic farms to make resource gathering a whole lot easier and efficient. I attempted to battle and defeat the Wither and the Ender Dragon at the exact same time in the exact same location. And I also won an intense battle against a Woodland Mansion. That's what I did in 300 days. Now, here are some things I want to get done in 400 days. The first thing I want to do is defeat a raid. The second thing I would like to do is expand my island by constructing some more builds and I also want to get a bunch of valuables as well. And, well, the final thing I want to do is to complete all of the hardest advancements that the game has to offer. So it's not going to be easy. I'm really excited to see what we can get done in 400 days. So with that being said, let the 400 days begin. <laughs> Our adventure picks up right from where we last left off. It was day 301 and I was back on the island. And like usual, the first thing I decided to do was go check on my cows. I wanted to see if they were doing okay. And well, they were super excited to see me back. But I couldn't help but notice one of the cows seemed just a little bit unhappy. So I knew what needed to be done here. I obviously needed to build a Christmas tree on the island, a small decoration that would only take a small amount of resources to construct. So that's when I got all of my tools together and went out to collect all the resources I would need. I would only need some basic resources like leaves and some wood, but after I collected all of that, it was time to build this Christmas tree. It was complete, a Christmas tree on the island, and that's not the only thing that was new on the island, there was a brand new guest as well. This was Snowy the Snowman. Snowy the Snowman wasn't the usual guest, he enjoyed dancing around the jukebox and even talking to the cows. But one day, Snowy the Snowman told me that he had to go back home. I was slightly confused and I had a few questions, I simply asked him one question. I asked him where would he be going back home to? And that's when he told me that I could come and visit him. So I agreed and we went to Snowy the Snowman's home. I was interested to see what it was like. When I arrived at his home, I couldn't quite believe what I was seeing. It's almost like his home was my server. Oh, wait a minute. That's because it is. So, you know what that means? If you want to experience the Christmas update on my server right now, and even meet Snowy for yourself, you can by simply joining my server. If you do manage to find Snowy, make sure to tweet me a picture at my Twitter, or even post it in my Discord. But anyway, if you guys do join the server, there's a bunch of awesome events coming up that I'm sure you guys will be interested in. But, let's head back to the island. By day 308, I realized that if I was going to survive another 100 days, that I would need to get some stuff done. And the next project I had in mind was the Enderman farm, which would generate enough Enderman for infinite XP. And infinite XP means infinite enchanting. And at this point in the game, that would be needed. So after clearing out all of my shulker boxes into my storage room, I then began gathering some supplies for the Enderman farm. I would need things like cobblestone, wool, leaves, and a bunch of other stuff that I would spend day 311 creating. I made things like hoppers, ladders, and even some carpets. But I couldn't simply walk into the end and just build this Enderman farm. If you remember from the last 100 days, there was a wither waiting in there for me. I couldn't quite defeat it in the last 100 days, which means that I would have to face it again if I was even going to get close to building this Enderman farm. So that's when I spent day 312 preparing all of the potions and golden apples necessary to defeat the Wither. I couldn't quite get rid of it in the last 100 days, so I knew what I was about to get myself into. The Wither was causing a lot of chaos in the end, and it couldn't go on for any longer. So, because of how risky this fight was about to be, I glanced around my island and said goodbye to my cows, because it may be the last time I ever get to see them again. The Wither was not going to be easy. I checked my inventory one last time to double check I had everything I would need, because there would be no second chances in this fight, so I needed to get everything correct. As I stood over the end portal, I threw my potions down and prepared. It was time to end the chaos this wither was causing. The foolish decision I had to take on this beast had to be done. As I flew over the end and saw the wither, I hesitated slightly. I was a bit nervous. I was aware of the damage the wither could deal, but there was no going back now. 
I swapped my elytras out for my netherite chest plate so I could take some more damage. My first arrow connected with the wither. It was onto me. It was only a matter of time before it would start dealing some melee attacks, so I knew I had to stay fast on my feet and be accurate with my shots. It was too fast for me, and the worst of it all is it could regenerate after every bow shot I hit it with. But I knew if I could get it down to half health, that it would start lunging at me with some melee attacks, and my sword paired with my strength potion, the wither would stand no chance. I dealt some serious damage with my sword attacks. And there it was, with the nether star in my hand I was victorious and I could now build the farm that I so desperately wanted. By day 318, I had fully finished constructing this Enderman farm. I was so excited to get all of the XP because the XP would all be going towards my brand new bow and arrow. My bow and arrow was good, but it wasn't good enough. I wanted to get things like power 5 and infinity as well, so then I wouldn't have to worry about getting arrows anymore. So after some time, I got level 80 and decided it would be best if I head back to my base and start enchanting the bow. I crafted a bunch of different bows and gave them all separate enchants, so then I could combine all of the best bows together, and as a result, I would have a really good bow and arrow in my possession. After combining some bows together and doing some enchanting, I got an Unbreaking 3, Power 5, Infinity Bow. I was very happy with this. But up until day 321, I hadn't done too much building. I had so much creativity, so I decided it would be time to start working on my next build. This would be an armory, a place where I could showcase all of my best stuff, including pickaxes, armor, tools, and even some swords as well. So for the next few days, I decided to get a bunch of resources, including cobblestone, some spruce wood, and even some sand to help make concrete. As the sun was beginning to set, I decided to put all of my shulker boxes down and get ready for this build. But then, something unimaginable happened. Just when I thought I was done with battles, another one emerged in front of my eyes. Pillagers, standing on the top of my storage room. I did want to defeat a raid somewhere in 400 days, but I didn't realize it was going to be this early. As I defended my island from these evil pillagers, I was awaiting the raid's arrival. With villagers directly under my island, the raid was going to begin straight away after I was done battling these foes. After defeating them, I was given a curse, which then proceeded to start a raid. I obviously went down to check all my villagers were okay, and they weren't. They were running around, completely scared, not knowing what to do. I went through all my chests and I had to do some last minute preparation by getting all of my strength potions. It was time to defeat this raid once and for all. I couldn't let them get anywhere near my villages. After drinking a potion, I went to the top of my base and glanced over at an island nearby. They were here. For the first wave of the raid, I was able to keep a good distance and bow and arrow all of the enemies. This was just the beginning. The raid was about to get a whole lot worse. And if the raid wasn't already challenging enough, I was doing it during night time as well, which means I wouldn't only be facing pillager foes, I would also be facing the dangers of the night, such as zombies, spiders, and even creepers. The second wave of the raid wasn't actually that difficult. I was able to get rid of it pretty quickly, but there was another wave incoming, but this time, it was on my island. And if the raid was able to get down to all my villagers, I would lose every single one of them. And not only that, all the trades I've worked so hard for would be gone. The next wave was inbound, and once again, they were on my island. But this time, there was even more creatures than before. Some of them would require more skill to take out. So for this reason, I got high ground on a tree on my island, and I was able to just bow and arrow down onto the enemies. Even though a raid isn't the best thing to happen, and it's not the easiest thing, I was still happy that it was happening, because I was able to get a bunch of totems of undying as well. But I was hoping later in the raid there would be many more evokers to come, so I could take them out and get even more totems of undying. The only thing I had to make sure was not only me, but also my villagers remained safe during this raid. The time had come, it was now time to face the final wave of the raid, and I really wasn't looking forward to this one. I knew it was going to be the most difficult wave that I've had to face yet. 
I was able to jump around and deal some critical hits to all of the pillagers, but these were the least of my worries. Things like witches and even ravengers were the things that I was worried about getting to my island. And luckily there was another evoker as well that was trying to head to my island, but I was able to take it out and get another totem of undying in the collection. I was struggling to find the last raider and I searched absolutely everywhere, but then I went over to a nearby mountain and found the pillager just standing there. And after taking the final pillager out, I heard this noise. A noise congratulating my success of battling off a raid. After the raid I went to check on my villagers and they were super happy to see me because I was actually given hero of the village once I defeated the raid which would mean all of my villagers gave me discounts. But I really wasn't looking to do any trades so they just chucked cookies and pumpkin pie at me. But I'll take it. And not to mention that pumpkin pie was pretty nice if I do say so myself. I opened up my shulker box and saw that I now had five totems of undying in total. But now the raid was out of the way I could finally head back over to doing what I was doing before the raid even started in the first place. And that was building my armory. The armory castle was pretty much complete, there was a few final touches that I wanted to add like a few item frames around on these tables which would be placeholders for things like my pickaxes, swords and tools. I also went out the front of the castle with some leaves and tried to add some extra decoration just to make things look a little bit nice. I also bone milled the front of it to make it look a little bit more natural and there it was, fully complete. Although the inside was completely empty, there was no armor stands showcasing armor, and there was no tools, swords, or anything like that inside of the item frame placeholders. So, that's when I decided to go into the creeper farm to get as much gunpowder as I could. The reason I spent a few days gathering all of this gunpowder was to build TNT. If I could construct a bunch of TNT and take it into the nether, I would be able to gather a bunch of ancient debris to ultimately make netherite so I could then build all of the armor and tools I wanted to showcase in the armory. For day 348, I went into the end to repair my shovels so I could get sand for the TNT as well. And by day 349, I had all my tools up to full durability, so I then headed back home. By day 350, sand gathering for the TNT was well underway. I didn't want to go crazy with TNT in the nether because I already did have some netherite laying around, so I would only need a little bit more if I was going to build all of the stuff that I wanted. I finished off day 350 by collecting the final pieces of sand that I would need, and by day 351, it was time to craft all this TNT. In total, I was able to craft just over 10 and a half stacks of TNT. After creating the TNT, I headed over to my storage room to find that I had 22 netherite ingots. So I would only need just a little bit more if I was going to make all of the stuff that I wanted. To end off day 351, I entered the portal and got ready to go into the depths of the nether for this ancient debris mining trip that I was about to go on. After looking around the nether for quite some time, I was able to find the perfect spot for ancient debris. I dug straight down and went to the ancient debris layer, and it was time to place all of this TNT and explode as much as I could. After creating the flint and steel, I mined in hundreds of blocks in one direction to see how far I could go. I attempted to leave one block between each piece of TNT so I can get the most efficient use out of this as possible. And well, after placing all the TNT, it was time to explode all of it. My luck with ancient debris was absolutely insane, I couldn't quite believe it. It was like I couldn't stop finding ancient debris. I spent quite a few days placing and exploding TNT to the point where I was getting so much ancient debris, but I couldn't stop. I still had a bunch of TNT to go, and I was going to make sure I mined every piece of ancient debris I could get my hands on. Oh, and on day 353, I got incredibly lucky. I found two veins of ancient debris directly next to each other. I ended day 353 by exploding the final pieces of TNT I had, and by the start of day 354, I mined the final pieces of ancient debris. And before I knew it, it was day 354. All of the TNT I had was used, and it was time to look in the shulker box and see how much I had collected. A stack and eight of ancient debris. This 
was insane. And because I had all of this ancient debris, I couldn't risk staying in the nether any longer. So that's when I decided to head back home and smelt all of the ancient debris. Once it was smelted and turned into netherite scraps, I put it in my crafting table and crafted a bunch of netherite ingots. In total, I got 18 ingots, and combined with the 22 I already had, that was 40 netherite ingots in total. More than enough for me to turn a bunch of diamond tools and armor into netherite gear. On day 356, I went on an overworld mining trip getting a bunch of diamonds, not only for all of the armor and tools I needed for the armory, but also because I wanted to get some work done on the diamond beacon. Up until day 359, I basically spent mining, finding loads and loads of diamonds. Throughout day 357, day 358, day 359, I found loads and loads of diamonds. And by day 360, it was time to head back to the base and build all of the diamond armor and diamond tools, swords and pickaxes. These, of course, would all be going in the armory. Oh, and not to mention all of the diamond blocks I was able to build and make some more progress on the diamond beacon on top of the storage room. For day 361, I quickly realized that if I was going to enchant all of these diamond armor and diamond tools, that I would need a bunch of levels to enchant everything. And that's when I decided to get level 100. Yep. That's right, I got 100 XP levels to enchant all of this gear. I spent the other half of day 361 enchanting all of the equipment to max level 30 enchants. And then it was time to transform this all into netherite gear. And with all of the leftover netherite, I was able to make a full block of netherite. This would be used as a nice decoration inside of the armory. So for day 362, I constructed this nice armor showcase area right in the center of the armory. I think it looks pretty good if I do say so myself. Once I had built this, it was time to put all of the gear inside of the placeholders that they had. For the armor, it was the armor stand and for the tools it was the tables with all of the item frames on. I went through and carefully placed everything in the correct item frames. And once I was finished, the armory was fully complete. Before I knew it, it was day 363 and it was time to start on a brand new challenge that I wanted to get done in 400 days and the challenge was to complete all of the hardest advancements the game has to offer. You can tell which ones are the challenging advancements by looking at the border around the symbol and also the purple text describing what had to be done. Here is all of the hardest advancements I was yet to complete and wanted to get done. The first one was to kill a skeleton from at least 50 meters away. The second one was to hit the bullseye on a target block from at least 30 meters away. The next one was to kill one of every hostile monster. For this one, I need to kill two phantoms with a piercing arrow. And the last one in this category was adventuring time, which means I would have to discover every single biome. For the end category, I only had to do one, and that was to levitate up 50 blocks from the attacks of a shulker. Next up, I have to rescue a gas from the nether, bring it safely home to the overworld, and then kill it. Then I have to use the nether to travel seven kilometers in the overworld. And the last one on this category, is to have every potion effect applied at the same time. And then to complete the last three, I have to breed all of the animals, tame all cat variants, and finally, eat everything that is edible, even if it's not good for you. The first one I started with was probably one of the easiest ones, and it was to get rid of a skeleton from 50 meters away. So I trapped a skeleton and dug away 50 blocks. I made my way to the end of the path that I had created, and I took my shot at the skeleton. And well, there was the first one ticked off the list. The next one I had to do was to hit a bullseye from at least 30 meters away, and this one is surprisingly difficult, so I came up with a pretty genius plan to get it done. And for this plan to work, I put some leaves right above the target block, and I was going to fire all of the arrows on top of the target block. Block. And then, once I was ready to drop them all down from the decayed leaves, I would set them on fire. Once the final leaf was about to decay, I flew away a bunch of blocks, and there it was. A pretty simple trick, and I'm pretty proud of myself for this one. The next achievement I wanted to do was to kill every hostile mob, and for this I would need to bring some foes from the nether into the overworld, so I collected a bunch of obsidian. Because not only would I need the obsidian for this advancement, there was some advancements that I had to do in the future that required a bunch of obsidian. So I played it safe and got about a stack. And when I was going into the nether to get this advancement done, there was a cat on the other side of the portal, which was, um... Confusing, but it was pretty cool. The first hostile mob I had to get rid of was a hoglin So I brought it in the overworld and it turned into this dangerous creature I hadn't seen before so I got rid of it and did the same thing for a piglin another hostile mob I hadn't taken care of yet was the endermite, but that was pretty easy Only leaving me two left the stray which I found in an ice biome and then a slime which was bouncing around in a cave So I got rid of it and the achievement was done monsters hunted was complete 
it was time to move on to the next advancement. The next advancement I wanted to do was arguably one of the hardest advancements there is, and that's to discover every biome the game has to offer. And seeing as there's a bunch, I decided that I would get all my potatoes ready to go and sell so I could get another unbreaking book and another mending book to put on my spare pair of elytras. So that way I could fly across the lands of my world and not have to worry too much about running out of elytra durability, because now I would have two. Once I had placed the enchantments up on the elytras, I dived into the creeper farm for a few days to get some gunpowder for fireworks. And once I was done with that, I had a lot of gunpowder that I then turned into fireworks and I was ready to set flight across my world to find all of the biomes. I had ventured upon some amazing biomes. And I even found my first jungle. Seeing as I was flying around for absolutely ages, I come across most of these biomes without even realizing. And the final one I had to do was this one with really tall trees. And once I flew within the radius, I had completed the adventuring time challenge. 42 biomes out of 42 biomes discovered. I couldn't quite believe it. But to get back home, I realized I could use a nether portal with all the obsidian I had with me. And I could also get another achievement done by doing this. By traveling through the portal, I was able to get another challenge complete. And this one was the subspace bubble advancement. Next up, I wanted to breed all of the animals in the game. I'd only done two of these and it was going to take a while. So I got a fishing rod, enchanted it so I could get some fish. Because, well, fish would be needed to breed animals such as cats and also ocelots. The first animals I ticked off the list were bees. Then dogs. Then sheep. Then horses and then pigs. And then after I breeded chickens, things started to get more challenging. I needed to start breeding things like horses and donkeys, and also just donkeys, and even llamas, which required a hay bale, which was quite unusual. Between days 376 and 385, I dived over to all of the other biomes I had previously visited for the discovering achievement. In the jungle biome, I found things like pandas and also ocelots, so I was able to tick those off the list as well. I also came across some foxes, and I used some sweet berries to breed these guys together. Also, not to mention, there's another advancement where if you can tame all different types of cats together, you get the achievement unlocked. So, any village I came across, I was always trying to tame these. Finding each of the different cats was pretty easy, and after breeding together some rabbits, I was able to find the two last cats I needed. The last cat I found here, I didn't want it to run away and mess up my chances of completing this achievement, so I was very careful, and after feeding it some fish, I got this achievement done. I mean, this achievement was actually pretty easy. After doing the cat achievement, I got back to breeding together all of the animals. So I went into a mushroom biome to breed together some mushrooms. After breeding the mushroom cows, I then headed into the nether to do the final two, which was the striders, which were pretty easy to get breeding, and also hoglings, which were surprisingly difficult to breed together. But anyway, after stumbling across the nether and getting them breeded finally, I'd completed that challenge as well. Now, I was close to completing all of the hardest advancements, but not close enough. So for day 386, I attempted to complete the advancement where I needed to bring a ghast into the overworld and then successfully get rid of it. So that's when I constructed two gigantic portals and started my journey of trying to get these ghasts inside. And this one was not the easiest thing. But by day 388, a gas spawned nearby and I was able to take it in. I went through the portal just to see the gas flying around in the sky. I was super happy to see this. After getting rid of it and completing this advancement, it was finished. One of the hardest advancements done within the space of three days. For day 389, I wanted to complete the two birds, one arrow achievement. So I enchanted a crossbow and got piercing pretty quickly. And on the night of day 389, I got incredibly lucky. By day 390, I only had a few advancements left to complete, and one of them was to eat every single food in the game, even if it was to harm me. So I waited until I was pretty hungry and got to work on this achievement. I feasted on rotten flesh, puffer fish, and poisonous potato, when combined gave me some serious effects. Raw rabbit, cooked salmon, cooked mutton, sweet berries, beetroot soup, raw chicken, raw beef, beetroot, chorus fruit, I had to be careful when I was eating this one, raw salmon, melon, a cookie, dried kelp, tropical fish, a spider eye, suspicious stew, cooked rabbit, cooked pork chop, raw fish, cooked chicken, steak, rabbit stew, golden carrot, raw pork chop, raw mutton, cooked fish, mushroom stew in a honey bottle, and after feasting on all of these different types of food, it was down to one last food that I needed to complete, and this happened to be the enchanted golden apple. I only had one of these and I really didn't want to eat it, 
but I had to get it done if I wanted to complete all of the hardest advancements the game had to offer. I took it out the item frame, I carefully held it in my hand, and I began eating. A balanced diet complete. I couldn't believe it. All of the hardest achievements were pretty much done, which only left me two more advancements to do, and these ones were pretty easy. In fact, one of them was so easy I went into the end, constructed a giant pole out of cobblestone in a nearby end city, And once I was hit with the levitation effect, I ender pulled up to the top of this pole, which gave me one of the easiest achievements there was. The great view from up here advancement. To end off day 391, I headed back to my base and got some sleep for the next day, where I would complete the final challenge. And this one would be a furious cocktail, which means I would have to have every single potion effect on at the exact same time. I spent day 392 brewing up all of the potions, and I was ready to get it done. Having every potion effect applied at the same time was the last advancement I had out of all of the difficult ones the game had to offer. But I knew it could be dangerous. One of these potions were poison potions, meaning that if a mob was to come along and deal some damage to me, I'd be out the game. It was time to start drinking the potions, and when I got down to the final few... I'd completed it. A furious cocktail. This was every single of Minecraft's hardest advancements in the game. I did it! I successfully completed all of the hardest advancements in Minecraft. I will save the easy ones for 500 days. And yes, I know there is one more secret advancement, but I will save that for 500 days. After drinking some milk, I felt way better and began construction on one final thing I wanted to do before 400 days was over. And this was a bridge, connecting my island to the main land. The bridge looked great, but it was coming to the end of 400 days, and I knew that I needed to prove myself once again, and I had to do this by defeating the Ender Dragon for the fourth time. And if I was to do this, another portal would be unlocked into an end city. Now, it was time to dive into the depths of the nether to get all of the gas tiers to construct these end crystals. It was time to prove myself once again. As I went through the portal, I stumbled upon a few ghasts, and ghasts drop gas tears, which is what I actually needed to build the end crystals. And after I had all of these, I could resummon the ender dragon once again. Once I collected all of the gas tears I would need, I then went back to my base and started making the end crystals. And before I knew it, I was stood over the end portal once again. It was time to prove myself for the fourth time, and get that fourth portal open into the end city. I calmly walked into the end and placed down each individual end crystal. It was almost time to meet with the dragon once again. I saw each obsidian pole summon itself in front of my eyes. I was just waiting for the dragon to arrive. It was here, but with my elytras and my power 5 bow, the dragon would stand almost no chance. I managed to fly around and take out each end crystal one by one. Without these, the ender dragon couldn't regenerate its health. But with the elytras, the end crystals were easy to take out, and then it was just me against the dragon. With a few perfectly timed bow and arrow shots, I was able to get the ender dragon in midair. And then, I saw it disintegrate in front of my eyes for the fourth time. I was victorious, and I'd proved myself once again. Oh, and let's not forget about the fourth portal that was opened, as a reward for me getting rid of the Ender Dragon once again. With a smile on my face, I collected all of the XP, and dived straight into the portal. I was home, and more importantly, free from the Ender Dragon. Here it was, day 400. I'd successfully survived another 100 days in Minecraft Hardcore. But there's a bunch of stuff that I would like to get done in 500 days, so let me know down below in the comments if you want to see that. But apart from that, thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you did enjoy it. I really enjoyed making it, but as I said, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you want 500 days, and apart from that, have a great rest of your day, and peace.